All right, all right, peace family. I hope that y'all are well. Hey, wellness community. I see y'all in the chat, huh? Butterflies in the sky. Okay, I see y'all, I see y'all. Hey, family, happy new year to you. Okay, this is the first live of the, this is the, my first live on YouTube, huh? Of the new year, okay? And I hope that y'all are stepping well and enjoying the vibe and, and stepping into the energy that you, you know, you set your intention for this year. You know, taking your time, being peaceful, relaxing, you know, what, what uh, Debbie Allen said on The Different World, relax, relate, release. You know, I hope y'all are relaxing, building relationship, huh? and releasing anything that is not of your wellness, okay? Um, family, you know, the, the, the thing is, the intention of this live is to discuss the difference between the terms witch and root worker. As I was stepping into the new year, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the vibe. I told y'all my, my vibe for this new year, the energy I'm on is doing it now. We are gonna do it now. You know, no excuses. We're doing it now. We're following our joy, following our peace energy, whatever is aligned with our wellness, whatever we get the urge to do, we just gonna do it. So I've been very mindful about, you know, um, that includes what I want to speak on. That includes what I want to talk about. That includes what I want to come out of my mouth. You know, um, where do I want my energy to be focused when it comes to what I'm teaching and what I'm talking about? And, you know, I, I've been really checking in with myself about what do I have the urge to teach? What do I have the urge to talk about? And recently I've been just naturally engaging in this discussion of what is a witch? What is a root doctor? What is a root worker? You know, a, 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 quite a few people have been coming to me talking about root work. You know, uh, I want to do root work or I'm trying to study root work. And, you know, uh, I had one of one of my family members call me. We hadn't spoken in a while. And this family member um, it was devout Christian. And she said that she's been desiring to return to the root. She wants to get into root work. She wants to get into, you know, studying the, the, the true, true. And she was like, you know, I feel like I got a witch in me. I feel like I got a witch in me. And I, I, then we went on the journey of discussing the difference between the term witch and the term root worker and who are you and what do you do? So my intention with this live is to share that with the community. What is a root worker? What is a witch? What's the difference? Which one are you? How do you know what term to use for what? Um, I, I found that when a, when a lot of folks talk about this, you know, they have, it's either one or two things. Either they have a negative thing to say about witches and it's like, oh, you know, witches are evil or this, that, or they make it very uh, race-based, okay? It's very much about, you know, witches is for white people, root workers is for black people. So I want to talk about that as well. <laughs> you know, we're going to talk about the history and the origins of the word because that's also important to know. So again, my intentions for this live is to explain the difference between a witch and a root worker, signs of both. Why is this discussion important and all that good stuff? Okay, so let's get into it, family. I saw somebody ask, has Diddy channeled peace? Diddy has... Uh, Diddy has stepped into the new year the same old Diddy, Okay. Stepped into the new year, the same old Diddy. Okay, all it's all about him, y'all. I got a little uh eczema under my eye. Y'all see it? I got a little eczema under my eye. I told y'all that a couple lives ago, and it's getting a little, and 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 you know, it's getting a little, it's it's clearing up, but it's it's present. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm I'm working on it. I've been doing my aloe and my coconut and stuff like that. But it's there, y'all. Okay. So, so Diddy, me, me and Diddy are both with the chaos, huh? Me and Diddy are both with the chaos. Okay. Diddy is transferring some of his chaotic energy over to me, huh? I feel, I feel like this is, this is the mark of chaos. How huh? I stepped into the new year, everywhere. Okay. <laughs> We're doing it now, following the joy. You know, I, I, I think I'm a, uh, when it comes to, to doing it now. We are bringing in peace, but we are uh, stepping into fun and joy and a little bit of that chaotic energy that Diddy carries, huh? So, so Diddy is helping me channel some of my chaos, okay? <laughs> but yes, family, I thank y'all. I see your comments. Thank you. Okay, y'all, so let's get into it, huh? 
So a witch versus a root worker and all of that. What is the difference? Now, first, we got to start with the origin of the word. So witch is a term that is it comes from old English. Right. So I, I want to be clear about this because a lot of folks, you know, it's a, a witch is connected to Wicca. So Wicca is a European tradition, a European folk tradition, a magical tradition, right? And I always say, you know, white folks got their own thing. Study Wicca. You know, Wicca, it come, it, it, that's, the, that's their version of, of you know, uh, magic, you know? And they call themselves witches, which is the old English terminology, but I want to be clear about this. The term witch has been used in the Bible. It's in the book of Samuel. It's in the book of Exodus. The term witch has been used in the Bible. So the term witch is not a new thing. It's a very old terminology, um, but but it's an old English word. Now, the roots of that word come from uh, come from Greek, uh, uh, the Greek, uh, a Greek word. I forgot what the word is, but it comes from Greek origin and it also has ties to Latin origin as well. But the point is, at the end of the day, the word witch comes from European descent. Now, oftentimes when folks think of a witch or what it's associated with, it's associated with any type of magic. OK, um, and this is important because this is when we get to the difference between a witch and a root worker. The term witch comes from any type of magic. OK, so they doing anything that has to deal with uh, with uh, working with powers being able to uh to change and transfer and shape shift and influence and move that's what the term witch is associated with people who are witches have 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 a uh, spiritual and magical powers and sometimes it's not all spiritual so that's why you know a lot of folks when they say you got to be careful using the word witch because witch can be evil and I think that what they're trying to infer is the fact that just because somebody is a witch or they turn themselves a witch because they have certain powers, they have the ability to influence and change and shape shift and move things around. It doesn't mean that they're doing this from a place of spirit. It doesn't mean that they're doing this from a place of wellness. They could be manipulating and changing things from a, a, a place of things not positive, huh? <laughs> things not centered in wellness, you know? Um, and, and they're not always necessarily using natural things like uh, plants and herbs and the elements. Sometimes they are channeling energies that are not of wellness to be able to do that. So a witch can do either or. Now, witch, of course, uh, is normally associated with women, but it can be, uh, but it, sometimes they say witches are universal, you know, genderless, but mo historically a witch has been a woman, a warlock has been the male version, a warlock or a wizard is the male version. Okay. But currently witches are used simultaneously across all genders. Again, a witch is someone who has magical powers they can shape shift they can influence they can uh some they ha it's a it's a whole list and array of various powers that they have and various things they can do um some of those things like telekinesis uh telepathy um you know the the, the of course possessing the clairs um being able to manipulate elements being able to manipulate temperatures and things like that um, being able to heal, take away, and put in certain illnesses and sicknesses and things like that. Um, that are, those are all things that witches can do. They have certain powers and they use any and everything outside of, including, but also outside of what is natural to the earth, right? Now, the thing about it is, you know, a lot of folks feel like, well, witches is not for us. A witches, that's white people stuff. But then you have, you know, the traditional, uh, the African traditional religions who, like Ifa, who have the term Aje, A-J-E, Aje. And Aje is translated to witch in English. And a lot of, you know, a lot of people who are in ATRs or practitioners of Ifa, they kind of reject the notion that a witch can only be a white person or is not associated with black people because of Ajay and the, the transferring of the term Ajay. But I, let's talk about that, right? So when we transfer words from Yoruba to English, remember, witch is an old English word. So when they're transferring words from Yoruba to English, they're transferring it to as close as it can get, right? So if Ajay is in, in Ifa is a person 
who can have these magical powers and can change and shape shift and influence. And, you know, they, they don't necessarily need the elements to do it. They just naturally do these things. That is an age. That is a, a, a what we would call a witch in English word. So when we say that, you know, uh, that a witch is only a white person thing, it can only be, is that's, that's for white people. We don't call ourselves witches, but then you have people who practice Ifa and they're like, well, we have the term age and age transfers to which, you know, so so it's not just for white people, it's for everybody. We got to keep in mind that the translation is as close as it could get to English. Now, could a person who in E5, could a person who is age also be a root worker or be called a root worker is said? Not necessarily. And let me explain why. When we talk about in E5, when you discuss age, right, again, it's a being or that has uh, magical powers. They have spiritual abilities um, and, and they can do things and influence and change naturally. Sometimes they don't even need anything else. They don't need no plants. They don't need no elements. They don't need nothing. It's just a natural gift that they have within themselves most often. Now, a root worker, the reason why you can't necessarily say that Ajay can only be a root worker is because root workers use the root to work. Root workers use the root to work. So when we say that black folks can only be root workers or, or we, we, we're not witches, we're only root workers. I understand why some black folks may want to reject the term witch, but I want you to be mindful of what you are insinuating. Okay, be mindful of what you are insinuating. The term root worker is somebody who works the root. The root are the natural elements of the earth. So working with plants, working with herbs, you know, um, being able to work with the elements, with fire, with water, with wind, with, you know, the, being able to work the elements. Okay. So that's, that's what a root worker is. You work with the elements, you work with fire, you work with the earth, you work with plants, nature, you work with water, you work with air, you work with the wind. That's a root worker. Now, are you a root worker? You are a root worker if you can use the elements to work and to heal and to shift and to change. You use the elements to do that. That is a root worker. A witch is someone who, yes, they can use the elements to influence it, to change it, to shift. But a witch doesn't necessarily need anything to do what they do. They just do it from within. And I know a lot of folks, you know, again, you want to take it back to that's a European word. That's a European word. Hoodoo is also a European word. A lot. We, you always speak in English. So when you speak in English, you're going to use English words. OK, you're going to use European dialect. When you say hoodoo, that's what when you say the word root, when you say root worker, all of that is European dialect. OK, so so sometimes, you know, and trust me, y'all know I'm not one of them black folks. That's like that's I'm not one of those. That's like, let's not make it about race. I understand why you want to. I understand why you want to say, hey, you know, that's not us. That's dumb. This is us. Riches come from, which comes from Wicca. That's not them. That's us. But y'all, we got to be careful of what we saying because uh, the reason why a lot of folks, okay, and I'm speaking of someone who's been in this for a while. The reason why a lot of folks who practice hoodoo sometimes go through a journey where they feel like they don't belong, y'all, is because they have the ability to do things that don't fit in the category of hoodoo. They have the ability to do things and to shift and to change that don't fit in the category of hoodoo because they don't need no root to do it. They don't need no elements to do nothing. These are abilities that they just naturally have. You know what I'm saying? So, so they don't need anything to manipulate anything. The magic is coming from within. The spiritual powers are coming from within. And in hoodoo, there's not necessarily have been a terminology to match that. You know, again, it's beyond just being a root worker. Being a root worker is a beautiful thing. Being able to work with the elements, being able to work with the wind, the fire, the water, and all of that to shift and change is a beautiful thing. But some folks don't need to work. They don't need anything. They don't need any tools. They don't need nothing. You, you, They, they can shift and change and alter from within, from just their mind, just their spirit. They just have these abilities. And I want to be clear when I say 
Okay, I'm not going to get into it right now, but I want to say we all have the ability. Some folks just have not tapped into it. But becoming a root worker is a great way to start tapping into your abilities. So again, this is for people who are studying plant medicine and you working with the plants, you working with fire, you learning how to work with the wind, how to work with water to influence and to shape and to shift and to change and to heal, which then brings me to the term root doctor versus witch doctor. When someone is a root doctor versus a witch doctor, who do you go see for what? Think about what I said. A root worker is anybody who works with the root. So if you are a person right now and you have your herbs, you know, you 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 got your plant stuff, you got your plant medicines, your herbs and things like that, and you use that and you take that to, to shift and change. You make your smoke bowls, you drink your teas and all of that, and you healing yourself, you healing your family, you taking your spiritual baths. You are a root worker. You are a root worker. You're using the root to work. You're using the root to change. So you are a root worker. A doctor is somebody who heals the multitude. A doctor is somebody who heals the community. So the root doctor is the person who has mastered this. They're the person who've been who's been in the game for a while and they have mastered the art of utilizing the root to work and to heal. Okay, so that is what a root doctor is. Now, the root doctor, and and, and I, I got to say this because this is in hoodoo communities, okay, sacred communities, especially if you Gullah, Gullah Geechee, you know the root doctor is there. If you live in a deep country, the deep south, you know the root doctor is there. And you take folks to the root doctor when they have been diagnosed with something that even the doctors can't put a name on it. The doctor don't know what it is. So you take them to the root doctor when you're looking for healing or some type of natural medicine, right? So like a great example of a root doctor, go research Dr. Buzzard. Dr. Buzzard is one of the most famous root doctors ever. Very big in uh, Gullah Geechee, you know, uh, um, Gullah Geechee, uh, 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 folklore. Okay. Uh, so, so, it, it, and I, I don't even like saying folklore because Dr. Buzzer is a real person or was a real person, but go research Dr. Buzzer, go research Gullah Jack. You know, these were root doctors. These were people that you would take folks to when you are looking for healing. And, you know, you got a family member who like, we had a family member and, you know, uh, I, I can't tell too much of the business, but we had a family member who was very, very sick. The doctors didn't even know what was causing her illness. You know, she had lost the ability to speak, lost the ability to walk and everything. And my family took her to the root doctor. They took her to the root doctor because the, doc the, the, the medical doctors couldn't figure it out. They took her to the root doctor and the root doctor did some workings and said that, hey, she got something on her. They gave gave some 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 medicines and some directions and said, this is the bath she need to take. She, I need to make sure she drinks this this many times a day. She needs to do this, this and that. That's a root doctor, a person who uses the root to heal the community. Okay. Now a witch doctor, a witch doctor, they don't necessarily need the root to do it. A witch doctor can heal and fix and shift and change without any tools without anything they don't need herbs they don't need nothing okay some folks some folks are afraid of the witch doctor and this is why people be like oh that's evil that's evil because there are some things some energies that the root doctor will refuse to work with okay when the root doctor refuses to work with these energies, you take them to the witch doctor because the witch doctor can tap into and turn, do certain things that the root doctor may not necessarily be willing to work with. So I got to touch on that because some folks get a little, you know, again, I don't, I'm, I'm not into the whole, the fear mongering and the, this is evil. That's evil. Y'all, there are some energies that are not for your wellness. Sometimes when people be like, oh, I think somebody got a root on me. I think somebody got a root on me. Sometimes people got energies that's attached to them. That's not for your wellness. Or uh, sometimes the root doctor can't do it for you. Sometimes the root doctor may not be equipped to work with those energies. You need to go see the witch doctor. 
you need to go see the person who is not only equipped to, but willing to work with those energies. You see what I'm saying? So that's, that's the difference. That's the difference. Are you a root worker or are you a witch? A root worker is somebody who works with what's natural to the world, the elements, the plants, the fire, the water, the air to heal, shift energy, change. A witch is somebody who they can do all the root worker things usually too, but they don't need anything. They don't need any tools. They don't need nothing. And I could get into examples. I'm just going to say this right here. Some folks, y'all, it may sound a little like, you know, you if you don't know, you don't know. But these are people who have the ability to Listen, y'all, okay, you got to see it to know it. You got to see it to believe it. But these are people who have ability to like start a fire with no, with nothing, with no tools, with no nothing. These are the people who have the ability to move and turn things with no tools and no nothing. These are the people who have the ability to shift energy and shift thoughts and shift mind with no tools or no nothing. You don't need no herbs. You don't need nothing. These are the ability, the people who have the ability to manipulate the elements, manipulate the temperature, manipulate the wind, manipulate the water with no tools or no nothing. They could stand at a body of water and make it do things that you cannot do. These are the people who can bring the rain down. No tools or know nothing. These are people who, yes, some, some, and it, it sounds like what, but they have the ability to levitate, to elevate, no tools or no nothing. These are the people who sometimes, some of them can shape shift and change things with no tools or no nothing. Okay. Cloaking, no tools or no nothing. Okay, so so make them, it, it's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. And not to say that all witches have all of these abilities, but they usually have one or more. And they don't need anything to do it. They can look at something and start a fire. No tools or no nothing. A root doctor works with the roots to do this. A witch has the ability to do these things without any type of roots involved. Okay, so that's a major difference. And again, I felt the need to speak on this because I feel like, you know, as, as, as somebody who's been in hoodoo for a while, in hoodoo, you know, there's not necessarily terminology to go with this. There's so, so then you have these black folks specifically, and this is why I don't like when people are like, you know, which is only a white people word, which is only a white people word, because there are black folks specifically who are practicing hoodoo, who are into hoodoo, and they still have no explanation for the gifts that they have, and they still don't feel like they belong, and they still don't feel accepted because they can do things beyond the root. They can do things beyond, you know, teas and tinctures and things like that. They can they can shape, shift, and change and alter and don't need nothing. You know, they don't need nothing. And there's not necessarily a term in hoodoo to go with that. Also, you know, again, bringing in Ifa and the term Ajay, you know, uh, for people who are only coming from, you know, a traditional hoodoo mindset where it's a root worker or a root doctor and then you hear it Ifa, you hear the term Ajay, you are limiting the power of the Ajay when you only associate them with the root doctor. You are limiting your understanding of the concept of Ajay and Ifa when you only associate them with a root worker or a root doctor. You're limiting them because Ajay don't need nothing. They don't need no root. They don't need no herbs. They don't need nothing. They can make that appear. They can make that grow. They can make that change and do what, what they want it to do. You see what I'm saying? So signs that you are... A, a witch, okay, because we already talked about a root worker. Signs that you are a root worker is you have the ability to, you know, use your, your roots and your herbs and, you know, the, the water and things like that to uh, to influence and shape and shift energy, okay? So to transmute energy and to heal and things like that, that's a root worker, okay? You have the power to work with the elements in order to do things that you desire, a witch is a person who has natural gifts and natural abilities. A shaman, okay, I got to answer this because Shirley asked, what is a shaman? That's a good question. A shaman just means a healer. 
any any of these could be a shaman shaman literally just means healer so any of these could be a shaman you could be a root worker and be a shaman you could be a witch and be a shaman you could be a reiki practitioner and be a shaman you can do the a shaman just means a healer so so there's multiple categories of shaman anybody who uses anything to heal can be classified as a shaman but ideally a shaman would go through studies under elder shamans to understand how to do this because a shaman is almost like the this is a very like dumbed down way to say it, but a shaman is almost like the life coach of the different <laughs> the different paths, right? So like, say for example, if you are a root worker and then you become a shaman, usually the shaman is the, the, the life coach of the root workers. They teach other people how to become root workers. They teach other people how to heal. They help guide other people on their journey. So that's usually what, like what a shaman does. Now, again, going back to what I was saying as far as like a witch and how, what are signs that you are a witch? Signs that you are a witch is, is simply put, if you have the ability to do things without even trying. If you've noticed that from a very young age, you have the ability to uh, to move things, to shift energy, to uh, connect with people's minds and thoughts beyond being an empath, beyond being an empath. If you have the ability to, uh, uh, and I say it in quotes because it's like the term is overused, but to read minds, right? If you have the ability to connect with people's thoughts, connect with their energy, to shift and change their thoughts and energy. If you have the ability to uh to manipulate the elements, to shift the wind, right? So like if you can go outside and you know uh call the wind to move and the wind moves. If you can start a fire, you know put out a fire and you can call to the elements to have the elements activate in your favor and things like that, you know uh speak to the water and have the water move. If you can go to the ocean and have the ocean uh, do things for you on your behalf and, and things like that, you can basically work and manipulate the elements at your will. Those are signs that you are a witch. Those are signs that you have special abilities. If you can, uh, uh, if you can heal, if you can heal, if you can give or take away sickness or illness without any type of manipulation, without any herbs or anything like that, if you can give or take away sickness or illness, give or take away hurt and harm, give or take away healing, those are signs that you are a witch. And again, the key is you don't need anything to do this. You don't need anything to... Um, to, to to manipulate this stuff. You're not using any herbs. You're not using anything. You're just naturally able to do this. All you need is you and you can naturally do this on your own. Okay. And the thing about it is, you know, again, keep, keep in mind what I said about the energies that they work with. Oftentimes, witches don't have a concern about working with different types of energy including lower level energies or low vibrational energies you know what i'm saying <laughs> low low vibrational energies they don't have a problem doing that because uh they they you know i'm trying to i'm trying to figure out how to say this without being offensive and this is no offense to we love root workers we love you know root workers root doctors you are powerful but a root worker and a, a, a root doctor is only limited to the roots that they know. They're only limited to the roots that they have the that they've learned and they've studied and they've practiced with. So some roots are not powerful enough to manipulate and work with and shape shift certain energies. They're just not. Okay, your chamomile is only going to do but so much. Your peppermint and your eucalyptus is only going to do so, so much. Your, your, your St. John's wort is only going to do but so much. Your, 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 uh, your, your, your high John the Conqueror is only going to do but so much. You know what I'm saying? So you got to, it's only but so much that they're willing to do. And it's not that it's a, only a little bit because root, root doctors are willing to do a lot of things. But sometimes there have been cases where root doctors are like, I can't touch that. I'm not willing to work with that. I'm not willing to do that. That energy, I don't, I can, I'm not working with that. I'm not dealing with that energy. Most often a witch doctor will do it. A witch doctor will work with it. They will do that battle. You know, they will do that war, you know? And uh, so can, can witches be root workers as well? Most witches are root workers as well. And, and the thing is, a lot of witches are root workers 
a lot of witches are root workers because the energy it takes to do witch work is a lot more than the energy it takes to do root work. Because again, with witch work, you're doing this without any tools. You're doing this without any help. With root work, you have help, you have assistance, you have tools, you have other things you can rely on. So it's not all just your energy. You see what I'm saying? Versus if you are a, if you are a witch it's, and you using those those powers, it's all your energy only that you using. You have no tools. So a lot of witches are also root workers. Okay, and again, it's not that one is better than the other. They're just a little different. And the reason I think it's important that we don't throw away these terms, you know, or separate ourselves from these terms, is because. When you only use the term root worker, you are limiting the understanding of spiritual energies beyond just root work. So if you're talking about like Ifa and you're talking about the Iamis, we got a little time. <laughs> we just, you know, I got to make sure I'm, I'm like, let me check the time. Or whatever. Okay, we got a little bit of time. If you're talking about Ifa, you're talking about the Iami, right? The Iami Ajay, the, the mothers of the night or the elders of the night, right? Um, and we're talking about the elder witches of the night, you are limiting their power. You're limiting your understanding if you only associate them with a root worker, if you only associate them with a root doctor. So you will never, you will never be able to fully understand the power of the EME if you don't understand what witches do and who witches are. You see what I'm saying? Like, so you really have to be mindful you got to be mindful of that. Okay. So, so that's why I think it's important that we don't throw out these words. And if there is another term in hoodoo that I don't know about, you know, that could describe all that a witch does, please educate me, please teach me. But, you know, oftentimes it's like, well, we're not witches. We are root workers. We, we're not witches. We're root doctors. Wait a minute. Some of us are, are root doctors and some of us also have powers beyond the root though <laughs> like some of us can also do things with or without the root we are beyond the root you know what i'm saying so that that's 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 what we have to understand you know what are ways to tap into hold on you said what are ways to tap into your aj when you are a witch what are ways to tap so you said what are ways to tap into your aj when you are a witch the aj is is a witch so uh, your Ashe, your uh, shout out to the sister uh, who who was correcting folks on the uh, the Ashe, okay, <laughs> the Ashe. So the, your Ashe uh, or your power as a witch, ways to tap into it is you just gotta practice it. That's the only way to tap into it. You just have to practice it to get better and better and better and better and better. Um, it's 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 again those powers are just coming that that is coming from naturally it's coming naturally within you you don't have no tools you don't have anything right so it's different than okay with root work right with root work say for example i'm i'm making a healing tea hmm? i can manipulate the different herbs that i'm using i could i could change my tincture i could change the potency by changing the type of alcohol that i'm using i said it right adiola thank you shout out to adiola <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna talk about you in a second adiola uh but but yeah so with a root worker if they are working on their root work they are changing and manipulating the different types of herbs or sometimes even like the spells that they're using the things that they're saying when they're creating these in order to shift the potency of whatever root work that they're doing but when you are doing witch work and you're just working with yourself and no tools, you have to change and shift and manipulate things that are coming from within. So like your intent, your words, how strong and how hard you are channeling this energy. Um, how do you respond when things start shifting and moving? So say, for example, if you're working with water, right? And say you are... Do, uh, Say if you're trying to make a, a, a shift the water, right? Make the water change, make the water move, right? So you could be in your house, or you could practice in your house, and you have a bowl of water, and you decide what you want the water to do. You put your focus there, and you channel that energy. You call into the energy of the water. You channel it, and you you tap into that, tap into that power, tap into that natural gift that you have. Same thing with fire, right? You can do things with the fire, call, connect with it turn channel whatever you trying to set a blaze connect with it turn that energy and you know shift and move and and you just you just call it and you do your work and and 
let the blaze begin. But you got to know how to respond to that. Okay. So it's, uh, I probably, this will probably be, have, have to be like a private zoom I do with the wellness community, um, to go into like more details about that, because you do have to be very careful because especially if you are naturally a witch, you naturally have these natural gifts and powers that you could do, but you are like a baby witch, meaning that you don't, you haven't like really sharpened your tools it can be very dangerous, especially if you're working with like fire, you're working with water, you're working with the elements and you are shifting and, you know, changing things like that. It can be very dangerous uh, because you can, <laughs> you know, I, listen, I got some stories, huh? Okay. <laughs> you can set things ablaze and it can get out of hand, huh? So you got to know how to, again, you got to know how to respond to it because you can surprise yourself sometimes with some of the things that you will be able to do, you know, but that's the, again. The intention of this video was just to explain the difference between a witch and a root worker, a witch doctor and a root doctor. I understand how people feel. I understand why people are like, you know, that's a European word and that comes from Wicca and that's not for us. But we also have to be mindful of, you know, again, every word that we're using, most of the words are European words. Even when you say hoodoo, that's a European word. Even when you say root, root is a European word. You know what I'm saying? Like all, all of these words, all of this is European words. But the question is, what's the intention that you're using the word with? What's the intent behind the use of the word? What is the meaning? What is the energy that you're associating with the words? You know what I'm saying? A, a, a witch can be a root worker. Not all root workers are witches. And there's a big difference in those. Okay. But again, you just do, do what feels good for you. If you don't feel good saying witch, cool. You know, if some, fo again, some folks feel like, well, witches are evil. I don't feel like witches are evil. I feel like a lot of, now some witches are doing things not from a place of wellness. Some root workers are doing things not from a place of wellness. You got root, root workers telling folks to put love spells on people and binding rituals and things like that. Like just because you're a root worker doesn't mean that you are for wellness. So both can do things that are not positive. Okay. There are, there are people who pray in negative prayers against people. Okay. There's, <laughs> there's, you know, anybody can do anything not of wellness. That's on both sides. Okay. In any side. But the thing is, there's a difference. Okay. There's a difference. And this language is important. And understanding this language is important because it's black folks, especially who have certain abilities that go outside of the root. They need language and, and terminology too that applies. So I don't think we should shame people or look down on people when they identify as a witch. I don't, when, when somebody tells me that they identify as a witch, I'm, I'm, I, of course, I'm not going to automatically assume, but in my mind, I'm associating that with you have the ability to do certain things outside of the root. When somebody says they're a root worker, I'm thinking that you use the root, you use the elements, you use the earth to be able to, you know, shift and change energies. That's a root worker. So there is a difference. And again, both can use their powers, you know, to, for for negative or for positive. Both can use their powers for wellness or not for wellness. You got to remember, they're shifting energy. They're changing energy. They're manipulating energy. They're working with energy. And energy can go up or down, high or low, left or right. So it, they, a good worker can shift energy in whatever way they want it to go. That's what a good worker can do. They can shift energy in whatever they, way they want it to go, whether good or bad. Hmm? up or down. Thank y'all so much for the donations. I appreciate y'all. Uh, it, it helps. I appreciate you. But I, I want to speak to Adiola because Adiola, you know, you, well, this community, y'all know a while ago, we did a Zoom where we was talking about um, Egg Bay. And Adiola came and Adiola taught a great lesson. You know, she, uh, Adiola is one of our wellness community family members. She's from Nigeria. And she came and she stepped in and she taught a great lesson on Egg Bay. And then follow up Zooms, we was having more discussions about E5. And Adiola came and, you know, she was teaching us how to properly pronounce certain things, uh, certain words like Ajay, um, uh, like like Orun, uh, Ire, things like she was teaching us how to properly pronounce these words. And family, I need y'all to understand that 
that's power and being a wellness centered person. There's power in being a good person. There's power in just doing the right thing and being kind and being love. And some folks may not even recognize in the moment how good you are being to them until they are introduced to somebody who is not. So if you if if you're on my TikTok, you know my TikTok yesterday I did a video and I, I also had put the video in the wellness community group chat where there was a young sister who was correcting folks on how to say I shake. Right. And she was like, you know, she was like, you people, you know, you American people are coming back to your roots and y'all trying to find your roots. But I don't know who she she basically was trying to teach people how to say the word. But her approach to it was very just not kind. It was not nice. And I had to shout uh, Adiola out yesterday in the chat because I, I hope that folks see that everybody is not like Adiola. You see, like, you see how Adiola is, because I, I understand, for the young sister who did the video, I understand her frustration. I understand her, her emotions are valid. You know, this is your culture. This is your language. And you hear people utilizing this word. The word is trendy and they're saying it wrong. So her emotions are valid. But even in the midst of the emotions, you know, as a good teacher, you have to check your own emotions and teach from a place of wellness. And I had to acknowledge Adiola, and I'm going to acknowledge you. I acknowledged you yesterday in the chat, but I want to acknowledge you publicly because Adiola sat with us on that Zoom that night. And she went through each, every word I asked about, like, Adiola, okay, so how do we say this? What about this word? Are we saying it right? And notice how Adiola never diminished us. She never demeaned us. She never referred to us as you people, y'all trying to, nothing. Adiola said the words. She repeated them. And I, I, I was like, okay, is this right? I'm saying it. She, she was so patient with us. She was kind to us. And she taught us. She taught us. She taught with love, with love. And I got to acknowledge that because again, I feel like some folks don't realize it until they're met with the opposite. And in the wellness community, we are blessed to have a sister like Adiola who is from Nigeria. And when we're talking about topics like E5 and Adiola is gentle with us and she can help us understand and she can increase our understandings from, from, from the root, from the culture. She, she's not new to this. She true to this. You know what I'm saying? She grew in this and she can say, okay, this is how you say it. Okay. Uh, uh, again. Okay. Cause I, I was doing a room. Oru, because you know, in, in 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 our U.S. English American tongue, we want to say Orun, Orun, Orun. You know, all the time. Speaking of heaven, Orun, are you in? O O R U N. We want to say Orun, and she's like Orun, Orun, and she's being patient, and I'm repeating it. She's repeating it back, and we're practicing. That was just a whole level of like patience and kindness and teaching with love. So I gotta acknowledge Adiola and say thank you because you know. Again, it's not often that you come across people who teach with that level of love and patience and kindness. And as African-Americans who are discovering our roots and you are trying to tap back into the root of it all with traditions like Ifa, OK, and, and, and other traditions you may be into, you know, it's important to have to respect the culture. And then when you can have someone who grew up in that culture approach you with love and teach you from a space of love, that's always valued and always appreciated. Because as I said in my video yesterday, you know, African-Americans, are a lot of African-Americans are willing to learn. They want to know how to do it right. But we want to be taught with love. We've been abused enough. So we don't want to be degraded. We don't want to be made to seem like we're not, you know, y'all, you people, this and that, you know, like we're not enough. You know, we want to be taught with love. So thank you to Adiola for always teaching us with love. We appreciate you dearly. But okay, family, I love y'all. I hope this video was helpful. Wellness community, I'm going to set up a Zoom for us. It won't be tonight. Okay, I can't do it tonight, but I'll set up a Zoom for us maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, Yeah, I, I could do it tomorrow. And we could talk more about um, witches. And we could talk more about like powers and things like that. And how do you channel that energy? How do you know if you have that energy? I'll share some uh, personal examples and things like that. 
and 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 we'll get into it. So that Zoom will be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Wellness Community Hour. I'm going to set the, the Zoom up now, and I'll put the link in the chat, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Everybody else, YouTube family, I love y'all dearly. Uh, again, Happy New Year. This is my first live of the new year, so Happy New Year to you. And I will see y'all soon, okay, as the spirit leads. As the spirit leads, I will see y'all soon. Peace, family.